हाँ सो आर एक्टिविटी एंड कॉम्पिटिशन फॉर फाइव टू ट्वेल्व ईयर रोल दिस मंथ इज बेस्ड ऑन अ वेरी स्पेशल राइटर एंड वी होप यू विल बी इंस्पायर टू पार्टिसिपेट टूडे आई विल बी रीडिंग एंड शेयरिंग विथ यू सम राधर अनयूजल एंड थॉट प्रोवोकिंग ड्रॉइंग्स एंड पोएम्स फ्रॉम द जस्ट सो स्टोरीज बाई रडियर किपलिंग as a rather different way of raising awareness about our planet and showcasing how literature can help us engage with nature and our fellow creatures in a new light this book i will be reading from is truly magical with great stories told in beautiful language illustrations by the author and poems two of which i will read today the book is available in the british council libraries collection and if you haven't already discovered it i encourage you to look for a copy and read it and soon now here's a glimpse of the just so stories radiant kipling was born in 1865 and he is the author of many enduring stories poems and short stories and here's a picture of him you will no doubt be very familiar with his with his first books for children the jungle books mowgli and bagheera and balu and ka and shere khan and i'm sure you will know all the other names too generations of children including me were tucked into bed with readings from his just so stories of highly imaginative and wildly improbable explanation such as how the elephant got his trunk told in the story the elephant's child and how the camel got his hump and how the leopard got his spots and he drew his own pictures himself to make his stories even more interesting and wrote little explanations about his drawings too so here is an example this is from the story the elephant's child so this is what he has written <clears throat> as you can see the elephant's child is having his nose pulled by the crocodile he is much surprised and astonished and hurt and he is talking through his nose and saying let go you are hurting me he is pulling very hard and so is the crocodile but the bicolored python rock snake is hurrying through the water to help the elephant's child now if you look on the right hand side of the picture all that black stuff is the banks of the great gray green greasy limpopo river but kipling says i am not allowed to paint these pictures and the bottle tree with the twisty roots and the eight leaves is one of the fever trees that grow there can you see the botley tree on the on, on the right hand side of the image so underneath now this is the big picture is what he calls the truly picture so underneath the truly picture and i will go to the <clears throat> go to an expansion or i cropped the truly picture so that you can see it more clearly are shadows of african animals walking into an african ark there are two lines two ostriches two oxen two camels two sheep and two other things that look like rats but they are rock rabbits they don't mean anything i put them in because i thought they looked pretty they would look very fine if i were allowed to paint them so that's how radiant kipling uh, sort of describes and talks about the illustrations in his just so stories isn't that fun so i'm going to start now and do our readings <clears throat> watch out for the amusing grand style and sometimes long and delightfully unlikely invented words each story in the jasso stories includes a short poem and the first edition features his own illustrations so here are two poems and the illustrations but sadly i will not be reading the whole story because that would take too long but i will share a bit of the story line so that you know you can make a connection between the poem and the story and also i will share some interesting notes by radiat kipling himself and this is what we hope all of you children who access these recordings will be inspired to do if you are aged as i said between 5 and 12 please write us a short poem on a favorite creature of yours and create a drawing as kipling has done and send it to us for our collage 
not only do we have prizes for the best three submissions, but you get to share your wonderful ideas and creations with us all because I'm putting it in a beautiful collage that will go up on our Facebook page. And of course, we hope that some of the things that you may not quite understand in the poems will make you curious enough to read and discover the full story. So I'm going to begin with the first poem we have chosen. So let me go. <clears throat> okay. This is a personal favorite and it's called The Cat That Walked By Himself. The story examines the relationship cats have with people and is set in the Stone Age. That is a very long time ago when people lived in caves with fires to warm and light their lives. The fire is a curious thing for the wild beasts and beasts and in turn the wild animals go into the cave to check out this bright shiny thing. In this way, the wild dog becomes man's first friend. The wild horse becomes the man's first servant. The wild cow becomes the man's giver of good food. I'm sure you know what the good food is. It's milk. And when it comes to the wild cat's turn, the cat says that he is neither a friend nor a servant. He wants to move into the cave on his own terms, for he is the cat who walks by himself and all places are alike to him. And if you read the story, you will also discover why do dogs don't like cats too much. So this is, I have shared Kipling's illustration from the original book, and this is what he has said about his drawing. This is the picture of the cat that walked by himself walking by his wild lone through the wet wild woods, waving his wild tail. There is nothing else in the picture except some toadstools. They had to grow there because the woods were so wet. The lumpy thing on the low branch isn't a bird. It is moss that grew there because the wild woods were so wet. Now I'm going again to show you underneath the truly picture. So this is underneath the truly picture is a picture of the cozy cave that the man and the woman went to after the baby came. It was their summer cave and they planted wheat in front of it. The man is riding on the horse to find the cow and bring her back to the cave to be milked. He's holding up his hand to call the dog. Can you see he's holding up his hand? The dog has swum across to the other side of the river looking for rabbits. So can you see how interesting he has made his drawings? There's a big picture and then there is what he calls underneath the truly picture. So these are little points of inspiration for you too. Okay, I'm going to go back to the picture so that you can look at it while I read the poem. <clears throat> Pussy can sit by the fire and sing. Pussy can climb a tree or play with a silly old cork and string to amuse herself, not me. But I like Binky, my dog, because he knows how to behave. So Binky is the same as the first friend was. And I am the man in the cave. Pussy will play man Friday till it's time to wet her paw and make her walk on the windowsill for the footprint Crusoe saw. Then she fluffles her tail and mews and scratches and won't attend. But Binky will play whatever I choose, and he is my true first friend. Pussy will rub my knees with her head, pretending she loves me hard. But the very minute I go to my bed, Pussy runs out in the yard. And there she stays till the morning light, so I know it's only pretend. But Binky, he snows at my feet all night, and he is my firstest friend. So that was the poem that followed the story, The Cat That Walked By Himself. So I will now go to my second poem. And this is about how the camel got his hump. So briefly, the story is about a lazy camel that would not work and simply said humph to everyone who would ask him to do some work. Again, the story is set in a time when the world was very new and animals had started working for human beings. The horse, the ox and the dog would work all day, but not the lazy camel that lived in the middle of the howling desert. He ate sticks, 
prickles and thorns and didn't exhibit any interest in working like others. Whenever anyone asked him to work, he would simply say, humph. The other animals told the man that the camel didn't do any work and the man distributed the camel's work among all the three animals to make up for what the camel was refusing to do. And this made the other animals furious. They held a meeting. And suddenly, the jinn of all deserts arrived, rolling in a huge cloud of dust. All the three animals complained about the camel to the jinn and how he would only utter huff. The jinn went off and found the camel sitting in the desert. He asked the camel to go and work. But the camel casually said, huff. Just as he said so, the jinn punished him and a huge hump bulged out of the camel's back. The camel was very proud of his looks and now he had a strange looking hump on his back. So I'm going to show you now the picture of this jinn and he's making his magic. And this is what Kipling has said about his drawing. This is the picture of the jinn making the beginnings of the magic that brought the hump to the camel. First, he drew a line in the air with his finger and it became solid. And then he made a cloud and then he made an egg and i have enlarged the picture so that you can see this at the bottom you can you see the egg and then there was a magic pumpkin that turned into a big white flame then the jinn took his magic fan and fanned that flame till the flame turned into a magic by itself it was a good magic and a very kind magic really though it had to give the camel a hump because the camel was lazy. The jinn in charge of all deserts was one of the nicest of the jinns, so he would never, never do anything really unkind. So I'll go back to the main picture so, so that you can look at it while I read the, the read, sorry, while I read the poem, and it's a really funny one. The camel's hump is an ugly lump, which well you may see at the zoo. But uglier yet is the hump we get from having too little to do. Kiddies and grown-ups too, ooh, ooh. If, you haven't in, if we haven't enough to do, ooh, ooh, we get the hump, camellia's hump, the hump that is black and blue. We climb out of bed with a frowsly head and a snarly, yarly voice. We shiver and scowl and we grunt and growl at our bath and our boots and our toys. And there ought to be a corner for me, and I know there is one for you. When we get the hump, camellia's hump, the hump that is black and blue. The cure for this ill is not to sit still or frowst with a book by the fire, but to take a large hoe and a shovel also and dig till you gently perspire. And then you will find that the sun and the wind and the gin of the garden too have lifted the hump the horrible hump, the hump that is black and blue. I get it as well as you, ooh, ooh. If I haven't enough to do, ooh, ooh. We all get the hump, camellia's hump, kiddies and grown-ups too. Wasn't that fun? It's one of my favorite poems from Kipling. And now um, I will go down to show, uh, tell, show you some of the other wonderful stories. So can you see, I've made a little list of some of the other stories that you get in the Just So Stories. So I hope you will be inspired to go and read a little bit. The language is beautiful, so don't miss out on it. Don't think it is too hard or too long or anything. Just get into it and enjoy the stories. All right. <clears throat> and these wonderful websites were really great resources for me when I was researching to make this little presentation to you. So thank you to these websites as well. And this is our activity. So now don't forget, right, to think of writing your own little poem and making your own drawing and sharing it with us for our collage as we celebrate literature and nature together. You can access this recording again on our Facebook page or on the British Council Sri Lanka YouTube channel. Make sure you send your submissions to the British Council. And, that the clo and don't forget that the closing date for your entries is 21st August. Plenty of time, really, to write a really fun poem and do a grand drawing, don't you think? 
just like Kipling has done. So look out for details on our Facebook page. And remember, we are giving away prizes for the first, second, and third best. Well, until next time, best beloved. Good night and stay safe.